Hello and welcome. In this presentation, I would like to give you an overview of the Ciprotec 5 capacitor bank protection features. My name is Klaus Wagner and I'm a technical consultant for generator, motor and transformer protection, as well as Ciprotec 5 applications in general. Capacitor banks can be complex systems customized for the special application, for example, for transmission grids. The design depends much on the used switching technology, mechanical, thyristor, IGPT. In detail, hardly one bank resembles another. However, a bank consists always of the same components, capacitors, resistors, coils, switches, etc. A capacitor bank often spreads over several feeders. The single branches are, for example, main capacitors, coils and AC filters or combinations of these. What are now the protection functions that ensure the operation of a capacitor bank? Some protection tasks can be solved with standard protection functions. The overcurrent protection for phase and ground faults is used to detect any kind of internal short circuit fault current. It is used as an overall protection for the complete capacitor bank. It can be also used at other places, so for example inside the AC filter element. The overload protection prevents an overheating of the components. An overall differential protection can be used to detect internal faults smaller than the operational current. A circuit breaker failure protection is used for the case the circuit breaker is not able to open after a trip command. And the undercurrent protection function can be used to open the local circuit breaker in case the upstream circuit breaker has opened. This is to avoid an unintentional energization of a not completely discharged capacitor bank when the upstream circuit breaker closes again. As specific functions for the capacitor bank, we have the peak overvoltage protection. It protects the capacitor's dielectric against too high voltages. The current unbalanced protection can be used in a capacitor bank with an H topology, as it is shown here. It detects the failure of a single or several capacitor elements. The circuit breaker restrike protection is responsible to find restriking currents after the circuit breaker has opened. This is a phenomenon that is especially important for circuit breakers of a capacitor bank. Another method to find failures of single capacitor elements is the so-called voltage differential protection. It requires the three phase to ground voltages on the bus bar and the tap voltages somewhere inside the capacitor bank. If the neutral point of the capacitor bank is isolated, also the neutral voltage must be measured. Unbalances in the capacitor bank due to faulty capacitor elements can also be detected using the neutral point voltage unbalance protection, which will be available in the version 8.60 of Ciprotec 5. How are the various current and voltage transformers now connected to the various protection functions? Ciprotec 5 has a very systematic and modular concept of so-called measuring points and function groups. Each current transformer and voltage transformer is assigned to a measuring point which defines how this measuring element is connected and its properties like nominal current and star point orientation. In the example on the right hand side we see two three phase current measuring points marked in red. Every function group of Ciprotec 5 represents an object on the primary side and is a container for functions which are related to this primary object. So you can find function groups like line or circuit breaker or disconnector, or in our case here, the function group capacitor bank. The function group capacitor bank has interfaces to acquire the necessary analog measuring values. For example, here for the three phase current into the cap bank, I three phase, and another three phase current called I unbalance for the unbalanced current in the H connection. But now let's have a deeper look into the specially designed protection functions. The peak overvoltage protection protects the dielectric of the capacitor against too high voltages. It is necessary to consider also higher harmonics because they also contribute to the stress for the dielectric. 
CIFROTEC 5 with a sampling frequency of 8 kHz considers reliably all harmonics up to the 50th. Different to what someone would expect, not the voltage across the capacitor, but the current through the capacitor is measured. The reason is simple. The transmission behavior for higher harmonics of a current transformer is much better than of a voltage transformer. So the peak voltage is calculated by integration of the measured current and no additional voltage transformer is necessary. Basis for this protection function are the standards IC6871 and IEEE 1036. The function has one predefined inverse time and one definite time characteristic. It can be extended by user-defined characteristic and up to three more definite time characteristics. The standards define only single points of the characteristic. So we completed the curve by linear interpolation between these points. Additionally, the pickup value is a parameter which gives the possibility to shift the curve left and right. A value of 1.1 corresponds to the curve defined by the standard. The calculated peak voltage is set into relation to the nominal voltage of the capacitor. The function monitors the voltage of each phase separately and issues also single pole tripping commands. The function offers two different delayed drop-off methods. The first is called drop-out with down integration. The pickup resets immediately, but the operate delay timer is counted down from the last reached value to zero linearly. With a new pickup, the time starts from the last time value reached during the countdown. As a difference, the dropout with delay time keeps the pickup for a settable time where the operate delay timer remains frozen. If the pickup returns, the operate delay timer starts with a frozen value. These methods ensure that returning short voltage peaks will also lead to a tripping command, even if the duration of each single voltage peak is too short for a tripping according to the characteristic. The current unbalance protection detects the failure of single capacitor elements in a cap bank. As you can see in the picture, each of the four overall capacitors in the H topology normally consists of several of so-called cans in parallel and series. Each can is again built up by a certain number of capacitor elements in parallel and series. The defect of such a single element results in a higher voltage the other elements must cope with. This means additional stress for them. The more elements get broken, the higher becomes the voltage for the remaining elements. That is why all the single element defects must be detected. The unbalanced current caused by a single defect is relatively small. So the function needs a very sensitive and highly precise measurement. If necessary, all the sensitive current inputs can be used. The current unbalance function has two types of stages. First, an overcurrent stage. A maximum of three stages are available of this type. Second, a stage for counting defective C elements. Here, up to four stages are available. Even without defective C elements, the cap bank can show operational unbalanced currents. They can be caused by, for example, manufacturing tolerances, temperature changes, and aging and disturb the detection of defects. To overcome this problem, the function can work with compensated currents. The compensation can be performed manually, triggered by, for example, binary input or via protocol, or automatically. In this case, every slowly occurring unbalanced current will be slowly subtracted from the measured current. For the counter stage, the automatic compensation is mandatory. Normalizing of measured currents. The unbalanced current depends on the overall current IC flowing into the capacitor bank. To keep the measurement sensitivity on the same level, the measured unbalanced current can be normalized with IC. The direction of the unbalanced current allows to find out the location of the faulty element. It can be assigned to group one or group two. Single phase unbalanced protection. 
protects the capacitor against single faulty capacitor elements for capacitors in double star point connection. The function has the same properties as the three phase function, which we saw before, but measures a single phase unbalanced current. The voltage differential protection is suitable for capacitor banks with both grounded and isolated star points. The tap voltage and the bus bar phase to ground voltage for each phase build a voltage divider. The bus bar phase to ground voltages can be calculated by multiplying the tap voltages with the quotient of the capacitances, Ka. If the star point is isolated, additionally, the neutral voltage needs to be considered. Now, differential voltage VDFA for phase A is set up according to the shown formulae. For phase B and C, the formulae are equivalent. If the system is balanced out, there is no faulty capacitor element, the differential voltage is exactly zero. In reality, manufacturing tolerances, temperature drift and aging can cause a differential voltage. Depending on the topology and number of capacitor elements, the measured voltage difference for a single defect can be very low and the operational differential voltage would disturb and mislead the differential protection. For this, the function offers a compensation, again triggered by binary input or protocol. When the compensation is triggered, the momentary voltage ratio between bus bar and tap voltage is measured for each phase and stored. The ratios then replace the setting values Ka in the above formulae, now indicated by KCPA. The bus bar voltage is connected to the capacitor bank V3 phase interface. The tap voltage has its own interface called V3 phase capacitor tap. For an isolated star point, the neutral voltage is connected to V unbalance. The protection is based on fundamental voltage measurement. A maximum of four stages in parallel is possible. Matching factors between bus bar voltage and tap voltage are setting values and the compensation of an operational differential voltage is possible and replaces the matching factor settings by the measured matching factors. Another protection function to detect faulty capacitor elements is the neutral point voltage unbalanced protection, 59NU. For this principle, the capacitor bank needs to have a wide topology and the star point must be isolated. The function measures the three phase to ground voltages and the neutral point voltage. The interfaces in the function group capacitor bank are equivalent to the voltage differential function 87V. The bus bar voltages are connected to the V three phase interface and the neutral point voltage to the interface V unbalance. Based on the Kirchhoff law for the sum of the currents IA BC equals to zero, a so-called operating voltage is calculated according to the shown formula. Without fault in the cap bank, the sum of the three phase currents is zero, and so also the operating voltage equals to zero. If the capacitor bank is symmetrical, the voltage unbalance factors KAB and KAC are both identical to one, and the operating voltage then is equal to Vn minus V0 where V0 is calculated from the three phase to ground voltages and Vn, the measured voltage at the start point. In case of a faulty C element, the voltage unbalance factors KAB or KAC no longer equal to one, and the calculation of the operating voltage now becomes unequal to a zero. So an increase of the operating voltage can be used to detect a defective capacitive element. However, also with this method, we experience an inference of operational unbalances of the capacitors so that VOP can be different to zero and hence compromise the calculation result. Thus, the function has a built-in compensation feature which calculates the voltage unbalance factors based on the momentary measured voltages and stores them in a non-volatile memory. These values replace the values one, which are used before compensation. For external faults, where the voltage of one phase can break down and the neutral voltage reaches a high value, the operating voltage can be different to zero because of measurement errors for the voltage transformers, for example. That is why the tripping by VOP is stabilized with a second quantity called the restrained voltage, V restrained, which is calculated as the absolute value of Vn plus V0. 
Similar to current differential protection, a tripping characteristic is defined between the operating voltage VOP and the restrained voltage V restrained with a threshold and a slope as parameters. Summary, a maximum of four definite time voltage unbalanced stages are implemented to allow different sensitivities and reactions depending on the number of defective capacitive elements. The compensation of the operational unbalanced voltage is separate for each phase and can be triggered manually. The use of a second quantity V restraint stabilizes the operating voltage for external faults via a tripping characteristic. For the detection of very small operational voltages, CProtect 5 provides a very high sensitivity of 0.1% of the nominal voltage of the capacitor bank. Now let's have a look on some topology examples and how the CProtect 5 structure adapts to them in a flexible way. We start with a small example, a capacitor bank in H connection. We can use the 7SJ85 with eight current inputs for measuring the capacitive current IC and the unbalanced current. In the function group capacitor bank, we use the first current input for the undercurrent, the overcurrent, the overload, and the peak overvoltage protection. In parallel, the current unbalanced protection works with the current on the interface I unbalance. In this example, we additionally have another cap bank in H connection and an AC filter with R and L components. We see that the function group cap bank receives the unbalanced currents via a multiple measuring point interface. This means in one function group, there can be several identical functions working with, for example, currents coming from different measuring points. In our case, the two unbalanced currents. This feature of multiple measuring point interfaces keeps the number of function groups small and so helps to keep a well-arranged function structure. Different to the previous topology, we now have 24 current inputs for the additional measuring of a second IRLC and another IC at the start point for current differential protection. The interfaces of the capacitor bank function group remain the same. However, also the IRLC is used as a multiple measuring point interface to distribute the current measurements from two different locations to two different sets of protection functions. In our case, the overcurrent and overload protection. The function group capacitor side measures the current at the start point. And finally, the function group capacitor bank diff protection is used for the overall differential protection using the currents coming from measuring point I3 phase one and measuring point I3 phase six. Finally, we see here a possible structure with 28 current inputs for an MSCDN, a mechanically switched capacitor with damping network. This setup is available in Dixie 5 as a predefined application template. So with a few clicks, you have a device configuration exactly for this example. CProtect 5 capacitor bank protection stands for a high integration density of protection functions and a highly flexible adaptation to the various capacitor bank topologies. Both features provide an economic tailored solution which covers the complete capacitor bank or a large part of it. Thank you for your attention.